testing the clinical efficacy, the quality, and the safety of the drug. Uh, after the patency is expired, uh, other manufacturers can produce the generics, the same drug, which is dependent on the on the brand one documentation and label. Uh, and by commerce test must be done for the quality testing. Also, the substandard copy uh, depend on the brand one documentation and label. Uh, sometimes there is no bicurvulence demonstrated with some with variable or poor quality. All this medication, all these products, supposed to be legally approved, except for the counterfeit. Uh, the counterfeit, there is no data available about it. They usually say it's from Canada, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and then no origin as well, but it's illegal. It's really considered a world and global problem. Uh, it affects both developed and developing countries. Um, from the news, Interpol said that during a single week, police and customs in 81 countries sees 2.4 million doses of fake medicine. So uh, imagine what this number will be in a month or, or a year. Uh, here we have an example from Yemen. It's a TV report called the fake medicine as a trade of death. Uh, they discovered that some anti globulin injections and some vaccines were only water. Uh, the health uh, professionals in Yemen, they blamed the government for somebody not providing the medications, the agents and the health authorities. And uh, they said that the reason sometimes for smuggling and faking the drugs uh, might be the drug availability. So sometimes the drug is not available, so they are looking for whatever available in the market or they, if there is no alternative or high prices. And by year 2000, they discovered that 80% of medication in the market were smuggled, and majority of them with low or no active ingredients. Another example from USA, early this year, fake anti-cancer drug discovered in a clinic in a nearby state. Uh, look at the packaging, look at the bio, look really genuine. But the FDA confirmed that it contained no active ingredients. And look at the expiry date, still valid till the end of this month. Here are other examples from the laws of the USA. Uh, AIDS medications discovered was fake. Uh, 2003, libido. In the UK, also benzodiazepine, growth hormones, steroids. In France and Germany, fake Cialis and fake Viagra. And I think most of you received this uh, junk email about selling this <laughs> medication. <laughs> and again, it was from Canada. I don't know. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> yeah, because maybe they want to be genuine. Another example from, uh, about streptokinase, uh, these are all different manufacturers producing streptokinase, and streptokinase is a thrombolytic drug. Uh, it's really critical medication uh, used for acute MI. Uh, they found that uh, only three of these products met the European pharmacopoeia requirements, minimum requirements. And most of the productions, uh, the streptokinase activity were varying from uh, 20 up to 86% of the activity. And you can see here, one product with zero activity on it. So, I don't know who the poor patients received that one. Maybe it's not around at the moment. Uh, factors encouraging the spread of counterfeit and substandard medicine um, sometimes weak supervision from authorities, uh, the profit they made, drug availability, uh, no GMP and no or, uh, or no GLP, uh, lack of 
of regulations, especially in free trade zones, and uh, sometimes the storage conditions may affect uh, the spread of this medication. Um, for pharmaceutical equivalent, before going to the pharmaceutical bioequivalence test, uh, the medication, the generic products, uh, should be the same, it should be equivalent to the brand one uh, in the strength, in the dose form, in the active ingredients, and in the route of administration. Uh, but it can be different in, uh, in the ingredients, filler, binders, excipients, and as you can see here, the lisinopril we collected with different colors, different excipients, some undissolved excipients. Uh, it could be different in shape, color, packaging. Uh, method used for detecting counterfeit drugs, package analysis. It's really simple. Sometimes you, have, you can check the package if there is anything wrong with it, or if you have an IV fluid, you can check the fluid inside the, uh, the pack or inside the vial. If you are suspicious about anything, you can go further for analysis, uh, spectroscopy, FTIR, near-infrared, uh, microscopy, like light microscopy or scanning it, EM, uh, separation techniques, which we will use one of them here, uh, LC, CE, uh, mass spec, and some companies like uh, Pfizer, they, uh, they use now um, SMS authentication, so you can send the pack code to the company and they will reply to you for free to confirm if the drug is genuine or not, for free. Uh, the capillary electrophil study, uh, Alpharazima and Perret uh, in 1997 developed uh, using uh, chemometrics, a generic MECC method to analyze the complex urines and other unknowns. Uh, cyclodextrin are a powerful modifier uh, of CE separations with low wavelength UV sulfated beta cyclodextrin uh, MECC can separate and detect both charred and uncharred species at the same time. Uh, here in this graph it shows what happened inside the capillary. Uh, it shows the electroosmotic flow uh, carrying neutral compounds with uh, with micelles. Uh, the micelles and cyclodestrine are both moving uh, toward the positive electrode. Um, this will allow uh, complex interaction and separation to occur, giving uh, good resolution. And here's a typical optimized separation of urine components by using uh, sulfated, uh, sulfated beta cyclic extreme uh, modified. Uh, and you can see more than 80 compounds detected. Uh, the method condition where we use uh, the system, HP3D system, uh, silica 48 centimeter and 50 micron. The buffer used uh, 20 millimolar sodium tetraborate at 9.5 pH and 70.75 uh, uh, SDS and 6.2 sulfated beta cyclic extreme. Uh, the voltage applied was 22 kV. Um, the sample we used, uh, it was the drug solution which is uh, lisinopril and cyclosporin. Uh, typical load, 5 seconds at 50 millibar and the temperature was 30 degrees. The detection range was from 195 up to 350 nanometer. Uh, the first uh, medication we used uh, to detect the impurities in it was lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor used for treatment of hypertension, heart failure, and acute MI. And you can see the standards of the lisinopril measured from 0.1 milligram up to 1 milligram. This is a 3D view. And it was uh, good, calibrated with good R square value. And here's the spectra of lisinopril. It's really characterized spectra. Uh, 
the sources of lisinopril, we collected 44 lisinopril products uh, analyzed, two brands from AstraZeneca in the UK and Egypt, uh, 42 other packs from various sources in Jordan, Turkey, Saudi, uh, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, and Oman. Uh, this is the first lisinopril. Uh, uh, this uh, graph shows the uh, peak of lisinopril with a little impurity detected in it. And this is the spectra of lisinopril and the spectra of the uh, impurity here. Other generic from UK with lower impurities in it. And this is a uh, brand lisinopril from Egypt. The, from same as Zeneca, but it manufactured in Egypt, and the impurities, six percent detected here. Uh, this is an example of some, uh, I don't know, maybe bad product with a lot of impurities in it. It's also another generic. This is a table of the brands and generics. It's a partial result. Uh, it shows the total impurities. You can see in brand A, 9%, brand B, and look at this one, 27% of the content were impurities. Um, the second medication we used was cyclosporin, which is an immunosuppressant drug with nanotherapeutic window. Uh, what I mean by nanotherapeutic window is that um, there is a thin line between the therapeutic effect and the toxic effect. This is where the drug work. Um, so low doses of this medication may end with renal failure, um, and high doses give toxic effect. And this is the last thing you are looking for when you are treating transplant, uh, you, when you are transplanting an organ. Uh, it was used uh, to, prevent, to prevent rejection uh, of transplanted organs also indicated for autoimmune diseases uh, such as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. Uh, sources of cyclosporin, eight cyclosporin products obtained from uh, five brands from Turkey, uh, Saudi, Pakistan, Jordan, uh, and Egypt, and three generics from Colombia, Iran, and Morocco. Dissolution test applied to cyclosporin capsules under this, this condition. This is the machine used for the dissolution, PTDT70. Uh, the temperature was 37.5 plus or minus 0.5 degrees. RPM was 50 and the volume 500 milli of deionized water. And the sampling time was on nine intervals uh, from five minutes up to two hours. This is the detection of cyclosporin. Uh, it was uh, around 27 minutes, and the spectra of cyclosporin. Uh, that was for the standard cyclosporin. This is for the one of the capsules from Turkey, and you can see the spectra of cyclosporin. Uh, for quantitation, we use the short end, which is uh, much better in time. And here's the results of the cyclosporin uh, we used from uh, different, different products. And you can see uh, the percentage of label amount is also different between the brand itself from different countries. It varies from 92, 84. And this product, I don't know if it's considered substandard or counterfeit. So when it's written on the label, it's 100 milligram, and you are giving the patient only half of the dose. So, what do you, what the result do you expect? And this graph also shows the time intervals uh, for the percentage of dissolved cyclosporin. All the products met the USP requirement, which should be above 80 percent of the label amount, except for this capsule, which is much below the minimum requirement. In conclusion, we can see we can say the generic sulfate beta cyclotestrine method offered a really excellent approach to separation of drugs.
products and unknown impurities in plant, generic and counterfeit medicines. Uh, it's not compound specific due to low, due to low wavelength detection. Uh, simple compared to gradient LC with better resolution and it was fast and cheap as well. Uh, so whenever you are taking a medication, should you ask yourself, is it fake or not? Who knows that? <laughs> Why is he? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank AstraZeneca for providing the standard. Uh, for providing the reference standard of Ezinopril, also uh, our colleague Nila, Nanda, and Mubarak for their valid contribution uh, in this study. And uh, I would like the Saudi government for sponsoring my scholarship. And uh, finally, I would like to thank my supervisor, David Barrett, who's over here, for his guidance and support.